So you're interested in muzzle loading, correct? You may get lucky and go down to the local pawn shop in your town to find a percussion rifle. Or you just might get lucky and find a rich uncle. They'll drop one right into your arms. But you need to have a few accessories to make it work right. Let's talk about it. Before we get started today, I remind everyone, ear protection and eyewear is strongly recommended. How do you actually know if it's loaded or not? Well, let's show you a way you can find out. First of all, you've removed the ramrod out of the firearm and you lay it right next to the barrel near the bolster end of it and measure it out from there. As you do that and get out to the very end of the firearm, you take a pocket knife out of your pocket and just make a little scratch on it right there at the very end. Just twist the rod around until there is a mark on the rod. Then when you stick the ram on inside the firearm, notice right here that there's a scratch mark. Maybe kind of hard to see, but it's right there at the end of the barrel. So you actually know that the firearm is not loaded. Some fellows shoot their firearms on the range, and they use T-rods, kind of like this one, or maybe have a ball-shaped knob on the end. They also should have a mark on the rod, if you don't put one on there. This one has a little blue mark of tape on it at the top, indicating that when I put it down into the barrel and it's empty, the tape is flush with the top of the barrel. If you drop it down in there and it stops about in here somewhere, that means the ball is not seated all the way on the powder load, or there's two balls in it, or some obstruction. So you will know right away it is a loaded weapon. So be sure that you have it marked when it's empty, and you know exactly what you're dealing with when you have someone else's guns, or it's on the range. 2F, as you can tell, has bigger granulations of powder mixed in together. Generally reserved for bigger bore guns, such as 54 caliber up to 75. This one's a 3F powder. Most popular powder out there, as you can see, the granulations are smaller than with the 2F. These are used in small caliber guns from 50 caliber and lower. That's not a rule cut in stone. You can use 3F powders in the larger bore guns. You just have to work up your lows to see what works best for your firearm. This is not used at all in percussion guns as we're talking about on this project. This is a priming powder made exclusively for flintlock rifles. You need a few more accessories to make these type firearms work much better. The two basic powders I like to use in the 3F form is Schutzen and Swiss. If true black powder is not available in your area, Pyrodex is a great substitute. I would suggest through personal testimony, you pick up the yellow can for rifles. It's marked RS as you see here, but I prefer actually the true black powder as you see below. Patch, always hear about the patch. I generally make my own patches, which you probably will get to using also, and I roll them up. There's a video that I'll post at the end in the description below to show you how to make these type of patches. Store-bought patches work just as well also. Balls. Yeah. Most shooters shooting 50 calibers rather have .490 balls, but I use these basically for plinking, so I make it a slightly smaller one, makes it easier to load. These are number 11 percussion caps, made by Remington. CCI also makes them. They run $8 per hundred on the retail price. A lubricant that makes it easier to load them up, pushing them down, is Mr. Flintlock Lube is a great one. There are others on the market, but I prefer Mr. Flintlock Lube. And cloth patches made out of old t-shirts, which you use to swab the barrels, meaning clean them out between shots. Or, at the end of the day, you can use these to clean your firearm. I'm the type of shooter that likes to shoot out of the pouch. Meaning, I'll take this firearm with me, and we'll go out into the woods 
with a pouch something like this that you can flip up and get access to the round balls that you need and inside the middle would be patches and other accessories that you would need. A part of that it says that you will use the very basics that you need to get by for a day hunt or possibly a weekend hunt or a couple of days. You also have a powder horn which and have the measuring powder device on it tied so you'll know exactly what to put into the firearms. The other type of shooters that you probably would run into will be the ones that would use these at the range. These big boxes, this one I picked up from Lowe's for about 20 bucks. The main reason I bought it is so that I can keep all the little accessories together. I got tired of having them laying all over the house and never could find anything. So I put them all together in here. Most likely new shooters will get this type of firearm. This is a percussion lock in this one. We'll explain more about that one in a minute. But the flint lock is the other type that we'll use. Remember the 4F powder we were talking about earlier? That's what you would use in this type of a lock to make it work. So simply you would pull the gun back into a half cock, prime it up after you've loaded the firearm, you pull the frizzen back, then you pull it all the way back, and as you pull the trigger, it makes a little spark, sets off the little, the little 4F powder in there, goes through the little tiny hole, and sets off the main charge. Just wanted to show you that so you can see the difference between that firearm and this one, which requires a percussion cap. Here's how this particular firearm works. As it is now, the cock or the hammer is right against the nipple. When you pull it back one notch, it's in half cock. It means it won't work if your gun is working properly. That's a good way to check it out to see, especially on used firearms. When you pull it all the way back, it is hot and ready to be fired when you pull the trigger. But before you load this firearm up, the best thing to do is to what we nickname pop a cap. So what does it mean to pop a cap? It simply means that you put your muzzle loader in half cock. You put a number 11 cap over the nipple and you look for a little blade of grass down along the ground or leaf or something like that to put it right against. And you simply just pull the trigger. What that does is ensure that the channel between the nipple, the bolster, and the barrel it's all been cleaned out from the oils of your previous cleaning. Now you're ready to go shoot. So as we go to load this up, I have the 3F Swiss powder here and a powder measurer. Now this one is 30 grains because I use that on the pistol quite often. It's the same one here. You fill this up, pour it all the way down into the barrel. You never want to take the powder horn and just dump it into the barrel. Because if you have a live ember down in there from a previous shot, you just might lose a few fingers if this little thing becomes a hand grenade. Or you could lose your life. So you'd never want to pour it straight into the barrel. Always use a powder measure. Cap the horn for safety when it's over with. It'll get you a patch. Get you a patch, something like these I've made. A lubricant of some type, which would be like a Mr. Flintlock lube. Put a little bit of that on there and get you a round ball started. Just like that. Some fellas use a device called a ball starter. I particularly personally don't care to use them, but I will show you how they work. There's a little point on this side of the ball and you put that right on top of the ball. Just give it a little smack. Then you could take the long end and put it on there and smack it down as such. Once you take this out and get it out of the way, the ball is about this far down in the barrel, and therefore the ramrod comes in handy next. You just push it on there and push it all the way down. Remember the mark I talked about earlier? It's right there. Here's a prime example to show you that this ball is loaded in the gun, and that's a direct indication that's on there, loaded. And that's how you can tell if you're into a pawn shop or a buddy's house or somewhere else, you just simply put the rod in there and you go, oh, the mark is up here. 
it's an inch down, that means this thing is loaded. If you're in the field, you definitely want to put your rod back into the thimbles. And now we're going to prime it on the line and see if we can take out Mr. Piggy back there. Now that the firearm is loaded, pull it back one notch. Always have the muzzle pointing down range for safety purposes. Put your number 11 cap on there as it's pointed down range and you are ready to go. One more notch back. This gun is hot. Just sight down through the sights and see if we can knock out Mr. Piggy right over there. Yeah! That's a lot of great starting tips. If you're interested in saving money in the hobby, you can actually cut your own patches. I'll leave a link to that description below for videos show you how to do that. If you're interested in casting your own round balls, for less than 150 bucks you can get started doing that. That link is in the description below. As a matter of fact, I'll just leave four or five real easy links showing you easy ways to have fun in the muzzle hobby. So no matter where your gun happens to come from, enjoy this fascinating hobby because I know you're going to love it. Hey, thanks for watching. And well, I'll catch you next time. Hey, Mrs. Black Paramedic, sure you want to try that again? Here, let's do it again. Oh, yes, I love it. We'll catch you next time.